I'll, I'll start the recording and start the introduction. So um, gentlemen, welcome to our St. Paul's uh, speaker series uh, event. Uh, this one is for June, 2022, but we're having it on the 1st of July, which uh, is basically a Friday following the last day of June. Uh, so it still counts. Uh, with us is uh, Dr. Kenny Musiska from uh, Minister of uh, uh, Agriculture. Dr. Musiska is the Director of uh, Plant Quarantine and uh, Phytosanitary Services, PQPS, at the Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, he's going to talk to us about um, uh, agriculture products export uh, and different policies that uh, the government has put in place to assist people that are in the agriculture sector of any kind with uh, uh, export mechanisms and maybe other resources. So he has uh, the discretion to take this uh, discussion in any way. Uh, Dr. Msiska, the, the group that you see here is uh, comprised of uh, uh, St. Paul's, uh, Paul's Secondary School alumni. And uh, they, they are different uh, ages or they left uh, St. Paul's uh, at uh, different times. So uh, at one point you're going to see the chat, the chat is going to be populated with uh, when they left. And we call that uh, experience painter. So um, they left at different times. Um, I see our Honorable Minister joined us there. Mr. Nzov, welcome. Welcome to this meeting. Um, so without uh, much ado, uh, Dr. Msiska, I'll, I'll let you start. To the gentleman from St. Paul's uh, in the chat, uh, if uh, it's possible, just go in and uh, tell us uh, your painter. Uh, so that way we know uh, who the, you know, the oldest is and uh, the youngest is and so forth. So I'll start with myself. So just the painter and uh, if you wanna put anything else like the house you're in, that's fine. Painter yeah, uh, so thank you very much and uh, good, every, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me start by thanking you uh, for the invitation. Uh, please bear with me. I'm in Dola and now seated in a room. I'll just click on the start video so at least you can see my face. Uh, the Marimbos are very proud because I'm still young, handsome even after so many years. <laughs> Is that not so, Ifre? Yeah, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that is me, um, Sister Ken. Um, right now in Dole, like I said, attending the trade fair. Uh, on behalf of the PS, he should have joined uh, this afternoon, but he's quite busy. But he's very uh, grateful that uh, we'll be having this chat uh, in the afternoon. So basically, I will share with you the export procedures um, from a plant and plant product perspective. Then I'll go in to share with you the details uh, regarding um, uh, market access. I don't know if um, uh, you're able to hear me uh, so far. Uh, yes, sir, we can hear you. All right, thank you so much. So uh, please uh, allow me to share the, the slides. So that's... Uh, Are you able to see the slide? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. I'm sure it's loading. Sure. Now let's just give it a few seconds. Any luck? Uh, yes, sir. It's, uh, it has started sharing. It's uh, coming. Hmm. 
Hmm. Is it showing now? No, uh, it just says uh, that Francisca Zari has started screen sharing. It's, uh, it's good now. All right, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yeah, so those are the details there, uh, my contact details. Uh, so please, uh, anytime um, you feel that there's need for more information, even after the presentation, uh, you can communicate via email, uh, WhatsApp, whichever is good for you. So that's our logo, the Plant Quantum Phytosanitary Service. Uh, basically, it's more to do uh, in protecting plants and facilitating safe trade. So with me uh, this afternoon, so no, it's so slow. Okay, that's a presentation outline. Uh, I'm going to talk about the role of the phytosanitary service um, under the Ministry of Agriculture. Then of course, um, we'll launch into the, the objective of this afternoon's meeting. We'll talk about uh, export procedures and um, market access. Then uh, just after that, I'll share with you the current status, uh, what products are being exported. And then uh, of course, those that are in the pipeline, maybe some of you will decide to grow or still ride on what is uh, being exported at the moment. Then uh, of course, at the end, just some key message uh, going forward. So the plant quantum and phytosanitary service, the core mandate of uh, the plant quantum and phytosanitary service, like any other competent authority across the globe that deals in uh, trade of plants and plant products is to prevent the introduction and spread of plant pests. These are pest uh, uh, colleagues that uh, are associated with commodities uh, moving in, in international trade. I'm sure most of us have seen on TV uh, how countries like Australia, even the US, and now the EU are so particular on uh, what plants and plant products that you're carrying in your bags. So Zambia similarly is, um, is in line with those international procedures to ensure that anything even if it's just one seed is free from pests because these pests, as you'll be able to see later on, they've got a the potential to affect the agriculture industry. So coupled with, um, with that mandate, our main objective is to ensure that there's safe trade um, even within the country, as we also focus on international trade. But most importantly is the legal framework because all the plant health inspectors, uh, the officers under our department are gazetted by law. And this is a plant pest and diseases act. So this law gives them the mandate to open your bags, to go into any facility, wherever there's um, uh, plants and plant products and we are suspecting of pests being present, they can open the that facility and collect samples. In an event that uh, there's a pest of quantum importance, these are pests that uh, are of concern, the inspectors can immediately demand that phytosanitary actions are put in place. This can either be destruction of the consignment, uh, treatment, or it being sent back to country of origin if there's an import. So where are we in terms of our national presence? Uh, we are basically in almost all the provinces. Not until recently, you can see those in red. We are not just at the borders, but we are also um, having presence at some strategic uh, inland checkpoints. So the ones in green there, uh, these are offices that we've just opened up in Wapula province because there's been a lot of demand for phytosanitary service. There's a lot of uh, activities there for export to the neighboring countries. And some time back, they used to go all the way to uh, Northern province for phytosanitary services. So we thought we need to get closer to where the farmer is 
where the trader is and any other person who is involved uh, in international trade as well as domestic trade. So we've opened an office in Wapula province. We've opened an office in uh, Northwestern and uh, in uh, Western as well. So there's a lot of demand for phytosanitary service uh, so far. So what are some of the important activities when it comes to, um, uh, to, to export? Uh, I just want to mention here that when it comes to export, they don't just look at the commodity that you have um, at the market. We have to look at what has been happening to grow that commodity until you harvest it and you put it on the truck all the way to the market. So from a phytosanitary perspective, one of the key activities that we undertake to ensure safe trade is pest surveillance. You can see on this on the slide there, I've got a, I'm showing you a map on the far left there. It just shows uh, where the office has been in checking for certain pests that are of concern to our trading partners. And uh, on the far right there, those are just traps that we use and the pheromones uh, that we use uh, to identify certain uh, insect pests. But of course, it's not just uh, insects, but we also look at the pathogens. But once that is done, we need to, of course, get samples and uh, identify them in the laboratory. These two activities are very key because these are the activities that inform us whether certain pests are present uh, in Zambia. And if they are present, how widespread are they? Are they localized? Are they too, um, are they widespread? If they are widespread, we have to narrow down now to the place of production. So it's quite uh, involving, but uh, very possible to undertake. The office, the uh, Minister of Agriculture through PQPS also conducts seed crop inspection. So any seed that is grown needs to be inspected because certain diseases, they only manifest during active growth. And uh, trading partners, when I say trading partners, I mean countries where Zambia does export, it can be the region, even beyond. The usual, the usual demand that a phytosanitary inspection should have been done during active growth. So during the time of um, active growth, the inspector is going to the field to ensure that certain diseases are checked at that, uh, at that stage and documented. But apart from that, uh, the office also conducts phytosanitary inspections. Uh, these are for exports, whatever that is going out to ensure that there's compliance uh, to phytosanitary requirements of a trading partner, for example, if it's Mozambique. But at the same time, we need to protect Zambia from pest introduction. So we conduct inspections on consignments coming in. And this inspection can be risk-based. It's not everything, but we've got a profile that informs us which commodities need intervention from a phytosanitary perspective. Fumigation is one um, activity that is highly regulated. We've got a lot of fumigators uh, in the country and this is just a delegated uh, activity to the private sector. In other countries, fumigation is done by government, but it's quite an expensive uh, uh, exercise. So we've allowed the private sector to undertake fumigation, but these every year, they need to renew the license. And uh, of course, before the license is renewed, we need to inspect all the equipment and uh, they need to undergo training. And of course, uh, premises inspection, like for tobacco, um, for, uh, for maize, those sheds, all these, they need to be inspected and certified by the office. Apart from that, we also create awareness because we realized that there was a disjointment uh, between uh, what we do and um, the traders, the farmers, even the policymakers. They need to understand the importance of phytosanitary uh, from an agricultural perspective and also from just the economic uh, perspective. So we create a lot of awareness. We talk to policymakers. We talk to small scale farmers so that they begin to understand the need 
of uh, ensuring that they put the good agricultural practices in place for them to be able to export or for them to be able to just sell their produce um, to um, meet the supermarkets, wherever it is. We also conduct training. Uh, these are fumigators, even um, colleagues from uh, Zambia Revenue Authority. We engage them so they can understand when we say we are not allowing import of uh, maize, for example, from a certain region in Africa. They need to understand why. So there are a lot of activities. And those that are involved in um, establishing plant nurseries for avocados and um, any other plants, we usually encourage them to register uh, with the Minister of Agriculture, in this case, the Plant Quantum and Phytosanitary Service. You can see on the slide there, um, some of the activities in regard to um, uh, nursery inspection conducted by the officers. Are we together so far? So far, so good. And uh, since you, you paused a little bit, uh, we have had some new people joining. Uh, gentlemen, if you don't mind, just uh, go ahead in the chat and uh, put in your painter. Uh, if you want, you also the house that uh, you stayed in at St. Paul's. Yeah, so far, so good, Dr. Msiska. Thank you so much. Please go on. All right. So, uh, in summary, uh, when it when regarding to phytosanitary, the office is there to facilitate safe trade, whether it is exports, imports, or transits. And on transits, uh, these are um, uh, highly regulated commodities. It can be seed uh, of late onions. Whenever they're passing through the country, they need transit permits and they're escorted right to the exit. Like I said earlier on, inspections are risk-based. It's not everything that has to be inspected because some of uh, the commodities, they carry pests that are already here in the region. And the region now is looking at how best we can harmonize the pest list. The pest list is there for us to develop phytosanitary requirements whenever we are importing as a country. And these phytosanitary requirements, they need to be scientifically justified because you just don't get up and uh, impose phytosanitary measures. You need a well-informed uh, uh, process uh, from a phytosanitary uh, perspective. You need to undertake a pest risk analysis and justify the measures. And uh, these are also very helpful when it comes to uh, market access uh, negotiations, because when you talk of market access, it's, it begins with the phytosanitary agents of Zambia, which is PQPs, with the phytosanitary agency of an, an important country, where you need to look at all these, the, 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 the type of pests that are present, what measures have been put in place, uh, do you have sufficient uh, manpower and uh, ETC? So it's quite um, uh, a process that sometimes can take quite a long time. I'll give you an example. When Zambia intended to export uh, fresh vegetables uh, to, the, to the US, uh, some years back. We started the market negotiations with our counterparts at uh, USDA, United States Department of Agriculture. They even sent their, uh, one of their experts um, uh, to our office and sat down with us for almost two years, just compiling the list of pests. Uh, that those are insects, the diseases, you know, in terms of viruses, those that are present in Zambia, for them to to develop the requirements that will be used for compliance when exporting to the, uh, to the US. It took almost 10 years for them to get back and give us the requirements. But you know, 10 years was quite a long time and uh, some of um, uh, the potential exporters, they decided to back down. Uh, so um, what are the export procedures? And uh, gaining of market access. So when we talk of exports of plants and plant products, that slide is just showing you that whilst we need to, uh, we're excited about uh, global trade, the expansion of trade across uh, the world, there's always been a risk of pest introductions. If you look at the records, uh, recently with the expansion of uh, 
you know, plants moving from one region to another. We've also been moving uh, pests. And this, in this case, these are diseases. Like I said here earlier on, the nematodes and the insects, because they get associated not only with the, with, with the plants or the plant products, even other pathways. And uh, there are a lot of uh, hitchhikers. So as phytosanitary agencies across the globe, we are busy developing phytosanitary measures for anything that has potential to move uh, pests that uh, could eventually uh, cripple in the agriculture industry. So we are very careful about this. So what are the export procedures? So when we talk of exports of plants and plant products, the first entry point, if you're exporting to uh, say South Africa, the first entry point is to obtain a plant import permit uh, from South Africa, just as an example. This plant import permit will stipulate all the requirements. They might say this commodity, let's, let's assume we want to export seed uh, to South Africa, maize seed. They'll mention a number of diseases. Uh, they will talk about the insects. They will also talk about the treatment. So once you obtain that plant input permit, Zambia will inspect to ensure that that consignment, that particular consignment that you intend to export meets the requirements of uh, the important country. So there's always need to be very careful on that one. Uh, demand for an inspection report from any inspector that is assigned uh, to facilitate that for, for you as a trader or as a farmer. So once an inspection report is obtained, Zambi show out what we call a phytosanitary certificate. This phytosanitary certificate is more like a passport, a passport for plants or for that consignment to cross borders. Without this phytosanitary certificate, and if it's a commodity of high risk, then there's no way that um, your community will, will cross the borders unless uh, one uses crooked ways, but that's quite high risk. And of course, um, once that uh, phytosanitary certificate is obtained from our office, uh, one has to obtain an export permit from the agribusiness uh, department, which is uh, one of our, our departments under the Ministry of Agriculture. So this on the left, is a procedure for this is for plants and plant products. And of course, nowadays, if it is soybeans, if it is um, uh, maize, for example, highly regulated commodities, we also share a schedule with uh, Zambia Revenue Authority so that they can know what has been uh, uh, permitted to be exported. Because in the past, we had a lot of um, uh, traders or clearing agents that will export, you know, without following the procedure. So nowadays it's a bit tricky. Then um, we cannot just talk about exports without touching on, um, on the imports. So when we talk of imports, it's basically the reverse of uh, the export uh, uh, procedure. And uh, of course, there's always need for other documents that need to accompany the consignments. And this can, can be fumigation certificate, can be laboratory analysis to ensure that uh, your commodity has been checked. But this is always determined by an important countries, an important country, because sometimes they don't even need you to, uh, to submit a laboratory analysis certificate. So like for Zambia now, uh, in the past, we used to do everything manually. Uh, so you can go on the Zambia electronic single window, register and do everything on the system. Uh, but before you log into the system, you need to do, you need to follow the procedure, the one I showed you just a while ago, uh, so that you can obtain all those documents and load them onto the system for you to get your phytosanitary certificates, for you to get your import permits, for you to get your plant import permits, 
and uh, the transit permits. So all these documents, they are obtained through the Zambia Electronic uh, Single Window. That's uh, uh, the link and uh, you need to register. So when we, are there any questions so far I can continue? Um, I saw a raised hand from uh, somebody whose device is uh, Techno POP2F. He hasn't put his name. So if you still have your question, please go ahead and ask Dr. Msiska a question. I have a question too, Prof, in case nobody steps up. Please go ahead. My question is, um, if I'm a small holding, uh, so small holdings farmer, and say I want to bring 10 seeds from, so peach tree seeds from Georgia, just for my small holdings farm, and this is not for commercial purposes, do I still have to go through that same procedure to bring those seeds into the country? Or is there another way where people that are not on a commercial level can, can obtain, I mean, can bring these seeds into the country? All right, thank you. Uh, very valid, uh, I mean, very important uh, uh, question. Uh, it, it really depends on the risk involved. If uh, one is important, uh, take for example, what you've just said, very few trees and uh, uh, our process, what we call the pest risk analysis process informs us that there's a risk, even if it's just one tree, then we will need to put measures in place. We're not going to stop you from importation, we're going to allow you, but you need to go through uh, the same process. It's quite uh, very straightforward, um, but um, uh, really depends on the risk. Other commodities, they pose no risk. Uh, they don't bring in um, a pest of concern. So we just, it's a straightforward thing. You apply on the system and uh, immediately the documents are issued. And in this case, uh, it's a plant import permit. But should it be a plant that um, has got potential to introduce, uh, like I said, the pest of concern, then we'll give those requirements and our colleagues on the, say from, uh, in the US, they will ensure that they comply with those requirements. So it depends on risk. So the best that one can do is uh, make an inquiry, uh, what needs to be done, and we advise accordingly. Remember that uh, we are dealing with risks here. So even if it's just a seed, you know, a seed, a seed is uh, one of uh, serious pathways that harbors um, uh, different types of pathogens. And uh, in this case, uh, seed is considered high risk. I'm just giving as an example now. Seed is considered as a high risk. So even if one intends to bring uh, exotic seed into the country, we ensure that it goes through the a pest risk analysis process so that we can even guide you whether you should bring that seed or not. But mind you, uh, the, the pest risk analysis uh, process can take a long time, particularly if it's a commodity being imported for the first time into Zambia, because we need to be very careful. We've had situations where um, a, a, a plant is imported and uh, well, in this case, maybe informal trade happened and uh, down the line, we see strange diseases strange insects and things like that. So to summarize my response, yes, you need to go through the same process, but we'll always inform you uh, as soon as we can, whether it's of high risk and if it's of high risk, what measures need to be put in place. Thank you. So I continue with the presentation. Uh, yes, except uh, uh, Hamlet, you had your hand up. Did you wanna ask a question or no? Mr. Tembo, you have your hand up and you're muted. Did you want to ask a question or no? He put his question in the chat. Okay. Oh, yeah. So uh, Hamlet asked a question. He said, uh, <clears throat> what factors do you look at when qualifying the plant product for export, e.g. avocado fruits? 
Good question. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I have um, a slide. I think the next uh, two or three slides, I uh, will respond to that question when I get to that point. Thank you then. All right, so I can proceed, huh? uh, Chair. Yes, sir. So uh, let's now look at um, uh, market access from my Minister of Agriculture perspective. Um, uh, you see, when we talk of uh, market access, basically we are talking of uh, global trade of, um, of plants and plant products. And of late, it's been growing, growing, and Zambia has got huge potential to export a lot of plants and plant products. But at the same time, it's a bit complex. When I say complex, because it involves um, a lot of analysis to ensure that we don't introduce pests, but at the same time, we don't spread them to our trading partners. So it, de it depends, I mean, it demands uh, phytosanitary measures to be put in place to ensure compliance because whenever there's um, an export of plants and plant products and it is found not to be compliant with those requirements of a trading partner, countries usually notify. And in this case, just yesterday I received a notification from China, of all countries, China, saying that the timber that was exported to China did not meet their requirements. And this is because they found an insect that is of concern to them. So issues of market access, like I said, they are very complex. Countries can raise a red flag, but we just have to continue uh, getting involved in it and ensuring that there's compliance uh, in terms of uh, phytosanitary measures. So, what is the status um, currently on, uh, on market access? Uh, you'll be happy to, to learn that uh, Zambia is exporting a lot of passion fruits now, and these are coming from uh, um, Koshi Farm Block and part of um, uh, Southern province. Uh, we are exporting to South Africa, to China, the EU, Malaysia, uh, and the UK. This has been after a lot of uh, discussion because for them, some of the countries, they just want to protect their farmers like in South Africa mainly, but in others, it was more to do with um, uh, uh, pests. Uh, Zambia also is exporting macadamia and so far these are going in huge quantities uh, to SA. Most recently, uh, it's been all over, and suddenly we've got a lot of experts in avocado. Um, Zambia exported to the EU, um, and we also received photos to show how it was being appreciated on some of the shelves there in the, in the EU, particularly the Netherlands and uh, Italy. And there was a lot of export also to um, United Arab uh, Emirates. And soya cake. So these are some of the, uh, the products that in the recent past, Zambia could not export them. It was more to do with imports. And uh, I'm happy to mention that um, uh, so far, there has never been um, a notification uh, indicating that uh, Zambia is ensuring that there's compliance from a phytosanitary perspective. Um, in terms of uh, avocado, I think in the next slide, uh, I'll show you what was involved. Uh, just respond to the earlier question um, that was asked by one of our colleagues. So what's in the pipeline? Um, at the moment, Zambia is working tirelessly on, a, on a completing the protocols with China to export stevia and the soybean meal. Uh, this one, I think anytime soon, uh, Zambia will be allowed to export stevia. Stevia is a, is a sweetener. In uh, the developed world, uh, like New Zealand, uh, in, um, I think Europe as well, they are using it as a sweetener. And Zambia is one of the countries in Africa that needs to, uh, ex it was exporting the stevia but uh, it was just a temporal 
um, uh, authority that was given, but we are concluding the protocol. Uh, it's with the Chinese government. And uh, this, uh, I, I can assure you that in the next couple of weeks, if, if, if not days, uh, Zambia will be enjoying, enjoying market access for this crop together with the soybean meal. Avocado uh, with South Africa, we are almost done. They requested us to do a video, uh, more like a, a virtual inspection, because they could not be granted authority. The experts could not come and do the inspection, the physical inspection. So we are just winding up with uh, the video so that uh, we can have a meeting, a virtual meeting, and we are going to show them uh, what's, on, what's on the ground. Uh, we are also um, trying to get the pineapples, mangoes, the chilies, and others into South Africa. So they gave us a questionnaire, which we responded to, uh, to provide all the pest information that are of concern to them. And then last but not the least, these are just examples, uh, potato uh, seed into Zimbabwe. Uh, like South Africa, Zimbabwe has demanded that we provide a dossier. We've been to the, to the farms in Imbala that deals with uh, the seed, the potato seed. And I think we are satisfied that uh, everything is in order. So these are some of uh, the commodities that are in the pipeline, but we're working on um, several of them. And uh, we just have to ensure that we follow the protocols and comply with the requirements. So uh, that's just a photo to show you uh, the, the blueberries product of Zambia. Uh, test our difference. And on the far right there is the product of Zander bananas, which we're exporting uh, to SA. And uh, below there, the inspectors uh, ensuring that uh, they check for all those pests uh, whilst the crop or whilst the fruits are still on the, on the tree. Um, this is just to show you. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have a pointer. Below there, it's uh, stevia, which is even used uh, as a sweetener in uh, Coca-Cola. And uh, of course, the blueberries on top, the avocados uh, and redness for export to the countries that I mentioned uh, earlier on. So uh, to respond to the earlier question uh, concerning the export of uh, avocado, uh, this slides uh, uh, basically responds um, uh, to the question, because the market access uh, negotiation can be very rigorous. You know, it can be costly because some of the countries, they demand that they visit the country of uh, production so that they can do a joint phytosanitary inspection with us. Uh, like most recently, the, 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 the Philippines were supposed to be in the country to inspect the whole process of um, what is involved in uh, avocado, the blueberries, but I don't know what happened that their government could not allow them. And then uh, of course, some of the trading partners demand below there, there are just some pointers among others, the global gap. That's good agricultural practices, quite a big dossier, uh, which we usually encourage farmers or potential traders to understand because there are a lot of chemicals there that uh, are listed and must not, must not be used. And of course, some of the countries that demand for pest information, I think I've been talking about this, as phytosanitary, what information do we have? Are we doing the monitoring? Do we have the system in place? Do we have the labs in place? Are the park houses uh, registered? How is the grading uh, done on this same uh, uh, produce? And of course, the production sites. Because the, when you talk of country of uh, production, it will be a bit of a challenge for Zambia to export because it means you need to give the details of each and every uh, farm that has been visited to export that commodity. So we've negotiated with certain countries that we look, of, we look at uh, the production sites. For example, if Mr. Maimbo wants to export um, uh, carrots, we'll look at that production site rather than carrots across, across the country. So we'll look at the, that production site and give information for that uh, production site. 
Similarly, on the park houses, because certain countries, they demand that uh, all the park houses where these commodities are stored or where they're graded, they need to be registered by our office. So it depends on which country uh, you're planning to, to trade with. Others are a bit uh, uh, stringent, yeah. very difficult to go by, but others are quite flexible. So it's one homework that we always need to undertake before we get involved into uh, growing certain commodities and later on fail to, uh, to export. But we are always available uh, to give that information. Uh, we always check with our countries, I mean, our trading partners. Sometimes we even visit their websites to just check on what, what are the phytosanitary requirements for, for Zambia to gain market access or for a farmer or a trader to export certain produce uh, to those countries. Uh, so whilst we are looking at um, the uh, market access issues, I always um, remind our, ourselves that we also need to protect Zambia from pest introduction. Because if the borders are just porous, if the borders, any trader can bring in any commodity, we might import some of those pests that I talked about and it might be difficult for Zambia to export because uh, certain countries, they are also watching. They are also watching what is happening in Zambia. Should they just hear that um, a certain pest is present, then they might put stringent measures or they might just stop Zambia from exporting until we meet certain strict requirements. I'll give you an example. At the moment, Zambia is enjoying the export market of uh, uh, seed, maize, simply because uh, we do not have maize listonic crosses disease, which is rampant, which is present in the eastern part of, uh, uh, of Africa. So we're not allowing any maize seed from that part of uh, Africa. And most of these seed companies, they've been coming to Zambia and trying to grow a lot of seed, simply because Zambia so far, is free from um, uh, that same disease. But we are very careful. We are, we've, um, we are quite aggressive when it comes to surveillance. We know that the disease is present in Congo. And you know, with Congo, the borders are quite porous. So we've uh, intensified our surveillance along that border. Uh, the disease is present in Tanzania, which is another neighbor of ours. But uh, the Tanzanian government has ensured that they've invested in surveillance and they've invested in in-country quarantine um, uh, movement of plants and plant products. So the disease is just in the northern part of Tanzania, bordering uh, uh, Kenya. So we are still safe uh, for now. Uh, but should other countries realize that we've relaxed our monitoring uh, activities, they might suspect that Zambia has um, um, uh, the disease. But for now, I can confirm uh, that we do not have that same disease. So what is a key message as I wind up uh, this presentation? Um, the issue of exports, the issue of uh, phytosanitary uh, measures, market access, we all need to get involved to ensure that there's safe trade. So it's not just one thing that we, yeah, we just start without planning or without engaging the Minister of Agriculture. We need to plan together and we are always available to provide uh, further guidance. And I would encourage um, those that uh, are interested in um, market access or intending to export some of the products that are already been exported to feel free to get in touch with our office. Uh, we've got inspectors dotted all over the countries. And nowadays, uh, with uh, WhatsApp, it's easier. And our office will be more than um, happy to provide guidance. We've got officers involved or very committed to international trade. And they are more than happy to provide that information. So, Chair, as I wind up, um, those are some of the avocados that have been exported, um, as you can see, getting market access is one thing, but maintaining it, this is where it is very, very important because um, we don't have to relax the requirements. They are 
some of them they are quite strategic, but some of them they are manageable. So I'm sure we can manage uh, to do that. And uh, last but not the least, uh, let me thank you, Chair, uh, for inviting the Minister of Agriculture to uh, to talk to us. And I look forward to to taking a few questions before I dash back to the trade fair. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, Dr. Msiska, this was, uh, man, this was world class. Thank you so much. Uh, very appreciated and very informative. Um, but we have uh, some questions here coming up in a little bit, but uh, just uh, to summarize uh, what I heard today from you is that um, uh, through your office, I mean, the government is uh, very involved in pest surveillance, um, obviously for, protection of local uh, flora and fauna, and then pest diagnostics and uh, seed crop inspections. And of course, these are huge uh, activities, but uh, the through line through your presentation is that uh, you guys are always available to help uh, farmers and traders uh, with uh, taking on these huge tasks on their behalf through awareness training in the country and also collaboration with other countries as they do their phytosanitary activities. And uh, I'll share the uh, link uh, to the Zambia electronic single window to the rest of the uh, St. Paul's alumni after this uh, presentation. Um, I also went to the uh, ozblue.com uh, website where the guys that are selling blueberries and I see they're importing blueberries from Zambia through, Australia, through South Africa to Australia, so already I think you've met the threshold for uh, high quality uh, uh, product. Um, there are some people here that uh, want to ask some questions and others that haven't raised their hands yet. Uh, one of them is uh, Dr. Alex uh, Kanyamazulu, who's involved in packaging. Uh, Kanyama, I'd like you to talk about packaging at some point, how important it is uh, just in terms of presentation of the crop you know, uh, in the export market. So just going by uh, who raised the hand first, uh, Mr. Onward Lumbama, you are on first. And then uh, uh, our own uh, headman, uh, Katiko, uh, will be next. And then uh, our commercial farmer, Mr. Medari Makombe will be third. Uh, Onward, go ahead. Um, if, if Ono doesn't come on quickly, he actually wrote um, a question. Uh, Ono, you want to read your okay. question? Are, are you able to hear me now? Yeah, you can hear you. Go ahead. You can read my question. Yeah, yeah. You can read my question, but uh, I was just concerned because uh, I think uh, in Zambia, most of the ministries don't take advantage of certain things. For example, now, uh, when you look at the process, Small farmer will not go through that process, but um, a big farmer goes through that. But also, ministry take advantage. I don't know why they don't take advantage of it. They have the equipment, they have the knowledge. For example, now when you look at Soweto market, December, our uh, our mangoes go to waste, and yet we. Um, South Africa is demanding for the same mangoes which are just coming from the tree, which are not. Yeah. So that's that's the question why as an ministry takes advantage of certain things that are already in place. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Doc, what's your comment on that one? Uh, I didn't get the last part where it says why the ministry. Okay, yeah, so the question basically was that, uh, and you wrote it in the chat as well. Um, he says, now I understand why mangoes at Soweto go to rot while there's demand abroad. Can't the Ministry of Agriculture take advantage because they have the information? All right, yeah, he's quite right. And um, you see some of these uh, issues that I did highlight, uh, if you look at, at them, one might think, fine, this is for the commercial farmers. But for avocado, for example, the, the demand is so huge that uh, from the last uh, discussion I had with uh, some of the farmers, 
and some of uh, the associations that um, uh, are now in place uh, here in Zambia, they are, they are talking about outgrower scheme. And uh, this involves uh, getting the, the farmers at whatever level they are and, and uh, just go into uh, this exercise. I'll, I'll give you an example, like in Kenya, yeah, there are farmers now growing on, um, on their small uh, land, a lot of avocado. Um, somebody needs to be muted. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Doc. We'll, we'll see who the culprit is and we'll book them. So, so booking, uh, Dr. Musiska, booking is a St. Paul's uh, practice where if somebody is uh, being uh, insolent, you write their name down and then every Wednesday you take them for punishment. Hello, do you still have uh, Dr. Musiska here? Okay, Dr. Francisco, there's a question from Mr. Nkachiko. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I, uh, so I, was just... I, I didn't finish the response earlier on. Oh, okay. It's muted. Yes, let me just wind up. Uh, sure. Indeed, uh, I was talking about uh, small scale farmers. Uh, so, look, uh, uh, indeed, what we're also doing at the moment as uh, phytosanitary. We are creating a lot of awareness. We've, I will send you the link and uh, what we are doing to ensure that the small scale farmers also get involved in these uh, um, market access issues, particularly for, for certain crops like the avocados. Of course, others, they demand high tech, but it always goes down to uh, what uh, information these small scale farmers have and the packaging part can be done by the, the bigger growers. Because some of these um, uh, the regions like the EU, they've now come up with private standards. And these private standards, they go down to what I said earlier on the global gap. So a small scale farmers will have challenges in uh, meeting those requirements, but working hand in hand uh, with the larger farmers, I think uh, that is very possible. Um, the mangoes, yes, uh, there's demand now, and um, Zambia is uh, discussing with uh, South Africa, like I said earlier on. Uh, but of course, it goes down to what type of mango. Is it the one that is has a lot of fibers or the juicy one, whatever? So it all goes down to what the market requires. Uh, I thought I needed to say that, Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Nkatiko, you're on. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Msiska. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I, I was just wondering, I mean, if, if your last slide showing the, the avocado uh, shows this Hass avocado. Uh, for me, a very ugly looking small fruit. What is wrong with the big avocados that we have grown up with uh, in Zambia? Is it they don't like them or what, what is the issue with that? And secondly, from what I have seen, the export drive is driven by a commercial interest, mostly by commercial farmers. I mean, blueberries don't, do not grow naturally in this country. I don't even know when they came in. My neighbor here at the farm grows uh, blueberries and exports them. What, what are the potentials for smallholder farmers to get a niche market which is suitable for them uh, to join the export uh, market. If you look at uh, Kenya, Kenya, the average size of a, of a farm is about uh, five acres. And yet here, uh, five hectares is a small, small scale farmers. So what is it that we are doing wrong? What can we do to ensure that our small order farmers get into, and what crops can they get into the export market? Uh, thank you, Doc. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Nkatiko. There used to be Mr. Nkatiko as a uh, uh, park or northern province. Any relation? <laughs> that, that guy died and then I resurrected as him. 
Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, I, I, uh, Dr. Vazizka, I'm the same, uh, but I, I am an alumni of St. Paul's Secondary School, just like uh, P.S. Bos. So I've been uh, in the background uh, listening. I, and I think uh, before this closes, because uh, Dr. Msiska is talking about cross, so what about export of animals? Uh, can he guide us on who should uh, tell us about export of animals and animal products? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'll start with the last one. On animals, uh, I can um, uh, link this group to our colleagues at Fisheries and Livestock. They can, um, I'm sure they will be happy to uh, make a presentation uh, on that. Um, if you just uh, give me that uh, permission, uh, I think next week I can engage them and then we can set the date when they should be uh, uh, available, when they can be available. But at the same granted, time, uh, granted. yes, and um, concerning the farmers um, that are growing these uh, high value crops, I can also um, uh, talk to them so they can make a presentation on uh, one of the days as we go along, because we need to look at everything. Uh, what are they done right? Because what we're doing now, engaging each other, talking about all these things, it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. And um, I can bring them on board, the ones for blueberries, the ones for avocados, so that they can just take you through uh, what, uh, what they did and what are the plans. But uh, just about uh, three weeks ago, we had a meeting with the avocado growers. These are the associations, the cooperatives, the farmers themselves were there. And um, at the end, it was agreed that some of uh, these farmers are going to organize a field day uh, especially the one in uh, in in Kabwe. Uh, they are organizing a few day where almost all the participants were there. I can extend this invitation to go to their farm and and learn. I know some of us we know already, but what did they do correctly to get where they are? I think that's where we should be going. Concerning the 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 old uh, avocado. Uh, it's still there in the supermarket, but uh, these are just new varieties. Um, they have avocado. Uh, they look ugly, yes, but they are on demand uh, simply because of the uh, longer shelf life. You know, uh, longer shelf life, um, it, it's not as bad. I mean, the shelf life is not as bad as the old ones. You know, the old ones, when, whenever you harvest, if you don't consume them, uh, in no time, they'll be you know, too flaccid, too uh, soft, and to some extent, not as good. So this is a new variety. Of course, in other countries like Kenya, it has been there. Uh, but here in Zambia, uh, it's something that, uh, to some extent, relatively new. And the EU, the EU, um, the EU is demanding for the Haas avocado. And you know that Peru, I think the biggest uh, uh, avocado grower in the world, uh, that's a major variety, apart from Fuerte and others. So um, we sometimes get driven by what's on demand. And uh, a lot of breeders now, they've put a lot of effort in uh, ensuring that they deal with the shelf life and of course produce what is um, needed on the, on the market. So that's what I can say uh, in summary. Thank you. I can take another question, uh, Chair. Absolutely. Um, Darry, did you have a question? I thought you had your hand up. Yes, Professor, yes, I got a question. I got questions. Sure, sure, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Doctor, for coming to this program. We really appreciate your effort. I would like to find out what you do to the people that float, the people that go against the regulation of the fire plant quarantine and phytosanitary rules, what um, punishment do you give them? What legal structures do we have uh, to deal with the um, people that go against those phytosanitary rules? Uh, thank you for that one. 
thank you so much uh, mr makombe yes doctor mr makombe is yes, from Cabo. yes all right thank you so much yes uh chair we've had um and number of uh, non-compliant uh, um, uh, chair that um, there are three phytosanitary actions that um, are enforced whenever there's non-compliance. The first one is um, if there's non-compliance, of course, our act allows us to, um, uh, to issue a penalty. You pay a certain amount. It's just been revised now. But it is quite little. So some people have been um, uh, intentionally uh, bringing in commodities without complying. But uh, what we do, apart from just a penalty uh, fee, we destroy the commodity. Uh, we've got a number of uh, videos that we use for uh, awareness, so they understand that if there's non-compliance and that commodity has high risk of introducing pests, then we destroy them. The other one is we recommend the treatment. For example, if it is grain and uh, it has a ledger grain ball or any other storage insect pest, we recommend um, uh, treatment at your own cost. And then after that, it can be released. But if it's an import also, uh, the worst case scenario is send it back to country of origin. The recent one was on uh, importation of wheat. One uh, milling company, I won't mention, uh, imported wheat, which was uh, uh, infested. It did not meet the requirements. Uh, of course, we did the laboratory tests, and uh, we just had to put measures in place and sent back all the, uh, there were about eight trucks. We sent back the, the trucks to the country of origin, that's South Africa. So these are the measures that we, we, we put in. But of course, like I said, we've had situations where informal trade uh, happens. And once it crosses the border, it's at Soweto market, it's, it's very difficult. But those are the measures that we put in place. Thank you, Chair. Well, yeah, I think you've already given us a lot of time, uh, one hour so far. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if there's a last comment. Uh, uh, Honorable Zov, did you want to say something? Hello? Hello, did you want to say something uh, as the bomber man? <laughs> yes. Maybe the first thing is just the excitement that uh, we are having this chat. Eh? Um, very, very good, Dr. Msiska. And maybe greetings to everyone. Um, I was interested in one particular submission and that's on the export market. And I think you also mentioned uh, uh, condemning basically our timber because of termites and all kinds of things. But Dr. Msiska, just to encourage you that this is a a very, very, very big fight we want to win. A lot of foreigners will come with all sorts of things just to reduce the pricing for our products. In timber, they manage to do this by and large. And it's the reason why you see um, a businessmen of a certain nationality have literally captured the whole timber market. They, they even determine the price now. Um, so we, it's a big fight, and it's a fight we intend to win. So with your support, you technocrats, I'm sure we can make a very, very good progress. So just to encourage you that we are with you and that these difficulties are real. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Honorable. It, indeed, it is a big fight, uh, but we are... The, the stronger devils. So um, we are equal to the task and uh, it is one uh, area that we are working on. And I must thank the government that they've given us more stuff. So we've placed uh, uh, plant health inspectors who are quite alert at some of these borders. 
uh, like in Chanida, because they were using uh, Chanida as an export route for timber uh, as one commodity. And uh, what they would do, the moment the inspection is undertaken uh, inland, along the way, they add more of the, the timber yeah. that is not planned, the one with bark. So timber should not have back that skin. So uh, we are quite alert. We are well informed, and uh, as I, I can confirm right now, that that truck was uh, impounded um, just yesterday, and uh, I think measures wow. have been in place. So it's a big fight indeed. I agree. So thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Doc, if you don't mind, we just have two more quick questions here, and then we'll let you go enjoy the trade fair. Um, the first one was uh, Mr. Chalom Sosha. Please, Chalo, go ahead. And then Mr. Melvin Banda, you'd be the last one. On the pop, I just wanted to let you know that there were a couple of questions in the, in the chat. But my question that I put in the chat was basically, who bears the cost of uh, a phytosanitary inspection? If I'm a farmer who wants to export, do I bear the cost? And what does the cost structure look, look like? Or what's the typical cost for such an exercise? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Chikloe. Uh, uh, Chair, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll send you uh, via WhatsApp the phytosanitary uh, fees you know, for everything that we do. They are not very much. So, and there's also a clause in um, in um, in our SI. The the SI is very clear uh, when it comes to cost. Sometimes it is cost sharing, but most of the time, our uh, government takes it up. But when it comes to documentation, the photosynthesis certificates, the plant import permits, uh, as a client, one has to uh, pay a minimum fee. So, I'll share that. Um, um, structure uh, with uh, the chair and then he can post it on the platform. Thank you, thank you. I think that would be very helpful. Um, Mr. Banda, before you come in, uh, uh, Alec, you, you had the question. Sorry, I overlooked it. Uh, go ahead and ask real quickly. Mr. Petten. You're muted, you're muted. You're talking to yourself. I was just trying to unmute. Thank you very much. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. The, the question that I had was uh, looking at the situation where we need to graduate from exporting raw products into exporting finished products for us to gain more out of the trade. Is the Minister of Agriculture in any position to have certain formalities that they've done deliberately to ensure that we, we are able to process these fruits, e.g. mangoes or purples, and the, even the avocado before we export it. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Peteni, uh, Alif. Um, uh, yes, uh, you know, this is what is being done now to add value. And the theme of um, the trade fair this year is basically talking about value addition. Uh, you are quite right. There's a lot of uh, uh, motivation, a lot of encouragement. And I'll give you one example, uh, the potato industry. You know, Zambia used to import a lot of frozen chips, a lot of them. Uh, and we used to import a lot of uh, uh, potato, table potato. But as we speak right now, uh, there are so many farmers growing the potato and there's value addition. Most of the frozen chips that possibly if you had hang your eye on today, those chips um, produce from the potato grown in Zambia by the Zambian farmer. And there's a, 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 a chips factory just near the airport where all the potatoes are made into frozen chips and sold across the country. And not only that, we are now exporting those frozen chips. So we've added value, not just exporting the, the tuba uh, per se, but the chips, the frozen chips. So that's just one example. Another example is on the avocado. 
there is um, a lot of investment now. I think it will be in, uh, in Kawamwa, in uh, Luapura province, where this time around, it is not the, the avocado fruit that will be exported, but the, they will be extracting oil from the, from the avocado just right here in Zambia. So there's a lot of goodwill. And uh, I'm sure with this, um, um, with this encouragement to the farmers and of course, industry, uh, that's a, the, the route to take. That's what I can respond for now, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Msiska. I know we've taken up a lot of your time and you have to go to the trade fair and uh, do other duties here. Um, Mr. Banda has had his hand up for a long time. Uh, Moses, do you mind if your question can come in a uh, form of uh, uh, WhatsApp to Dr. Msiska at some point, but I would like to give uh, Mr. Banda an opportunity to ask because you've had your hand, your, your hand raised for quite a while. Please go ahead very quickly. Uh, Melvin. You're muted, Melvin. Okay, maybe he's not gonna ask a question. Uh, Moses, go ahead and ask your question real quick. Okay, well, uh, our two last uh, questions are not coming. Um, Mine so is coming. Oh, he's coming. Okay, please go ahead very quickly. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, doctor, for the presentation. Well appreciated. Uh, mine is to do with market linkages. Production is not a problem. Many farmers are producing, but the market out there is difficult to get. Do you have a department in the Ministry of Agriculture where I can walk in there and find out uh, the list of buyers interested in the produce from our country and then I'll be able to know where I belong? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Moses. I totally agree with you. Um, market linkages are quite uh, uh, important. Uh, and uh, this set of ours. Uh, yes, there's a department under the Minister of Agriculture. It's called Agribusiness and Marketing Department. Uh, again, um, I'll, I'll work closely with the chair and see how often we can bring some of these um, uh, people's resource uh, colleagues to talk to, uh, to this group. Uh, I'll whisper to my counterpart, the director of uh, Agribusiness, uh, if he's willing, uh, uh, to make a presentation. And they've got a lot of information on market linkages. So um, I'm sure it will be useful um, uh, to bring him on board. Awesome. Well, you know, I don't want to take up most of your time, uh, Dr. Msiska. You've been more than generous with uh, your time, your information and uh, expertise. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, we shall follow up with you on a, set, a couple of things. Number one, was the cost of uh, phytosanitary services, and then maybe that list of buyers that Moses was asking about, and um, also waiting for information uh, from the colleagues at Fisheries and Livestock uh, on a similar presentation, but on the livestock side of things. Um, but in general, uh, I think uh, we've all enjoyed this presentation, and uh, uh, we'll make it available to our colleagues who didn't make it, uh, you know, via. Uh, a private uh, link that we make. And uh, just uh, to thank you very much for uh, coming and making this presentation and also to Honorable uh, uh, Green Mbozi, uh, your permanent secretary for making this linkage to you. Uh, he's been also very generous on the chats, you know, with information and so forth. And uh, Honorable Nzovu, thank you for that uh, close up that you gave uh, as far as what, uh, support that uh, you guys are doing at the you know, higher level government and whatnot. Uh, so gentlemen, thanks for coming. We shall do this again in the next one, uh, next one month. Uh, within this weekend, we shall uh, determine who has attended the most 
presentations in this last uh, three months and they'll get a prize. I think uh, Chalo is going to make that announcement at some point. So uh, thank you so much, people. Uh, it's uh, Friday in Jakarta, so go and behave yourselves. Thank you so much, Chair, and thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Well done. Oh, thank you, Tambala. Thank you for coming, man. Yeah, always a pleasure. That was nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so you, you guys Professor, now have to go to the trade fair. Professor, is the Dr. Msiska at the show? Dr. Msiska? No, he's not. Sorry. Dr. Msiska is at the trade fair. In Sorry, at the trade fair, yes. Yes, he's at the trade fair, yes. Okay, in that's where I'm driving to, actually. Oh, yeah, go look so him I'll up. Catch and, up uh, I'll catch up with him. I don't know whether you have his number. I can call him up. I'll have his number. I'll send it to you. Uh, I'll private you. send it to you. Thank you. Oh, honorable, don't 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 intimidate him. Hello. <laughs> don't intimidate him. <laughs> big, big boss, big boss. I was looking at your face. Nice seeing you. I'm just around, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm protecting Dr. Musis. Thank you very, thank you very much, Professor Kapata Moyopov, for bringing you to me. Professor, <laughs> these people have disappeared from us, so bring them back to us, please. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Actually, Mr. Nkatiko, it should be my uh, elder statesman there in Silverest. So oh, when I'm yeah. back on uh, fair ground, you'll be managing me. Professor is my senior neighbor, so I can't say much. And the uh, honorable, you owe me. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. all the lot of people. This chap Collins. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, be careful when you use the first name. Which chap Collins? The most of the same. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey. hey all, 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 all the first lessons in agriculture. Hey. My headman, you all have lessons in agriculture also. <laughs> You can go for one power. There's a list you already on the line now. <laughs> When's the manpower? Yeah, this, this is Friday. The manpower is on Wednesday. You can go for it. Who, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> well done, the ladies and gentlemen. This was very good. Thank you so much, Mr. Nkachiko. That was a good question you asked uh, about the agri avocados. Yes, they, they don't look nice. I know they are the good ones that we eat. Yeah, but but uh, how come you didn't speak? Um, maybe you should take this opportunity to introduce your business to the people here. Oh, okay. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Um, yeah, well, I know you it was way. nice uh, listening. I didn't see my family. 